everyone, Mitch coming in from the Grand Score Studio. Welcome to the show. So today's episode comes to you courtesy of Malcolm, one of my amazing patrons who's been supporting this channel as a general tier patron. I truly couldn't do this without the support from amazing patrons like Malcolm. So again, Malcolm, thank you so much. And for the personalized deck deck, Malcolm Joes, Nightmare Moon. Now there is a slight tweak to this one and we will talk about that as soon as we talk about, well, the full cards. Let's read through it first. Nightmare Moon is a 6-6 Ledger Creature Alicorn, not sure if I'm saying that right, with flying, that costs 4 black black. As long as it's nighttime, Nightmare Moon gets plus 2 plus 2 and has Menace, and by paying 6, you transform it. Any pony may activate this ability or help pay the cost. When they do, they become your friend, and this flips over into Princess Luna, a 4-4 Flying Alicorn. And when this transforms into Princess Luna, you choose up to 6 cards you own from outside the game with a moon in their art, then exile those cards. As long as those cards remain exiled, you may cast them, and your friends may cast them with your permission. Gifts are appreciated. So, this commander is technically not a legal commander. So, if you are going to be playing with this one, ask your playgroup first. And, yeah, most players out there. Again, I have a rarity deck that I played with before. Many players out there are completely fine with that. So, ask first. And also ask if you can make a slight adjustment because... Well, uh, in Commander, technically, there isn't an outside the game or sideboard, essentially, to utilize. Uh, go ask the Rules Committee why that is, so you can't utilize, like, Wish-type effects. That being said, this Commander entirely depends on you being able to do that. So, if they're okay with you playing with this Commander, they should be okay with you also utilizing a sideboard. And one more slight ask that I would ask as well. Hey, um, can the sideboard be, essentially, any color? Not just limited to mono black, so... The way I'm going to be building this deck is that this commander is mono black when it comes to the actual deck, the 99, but the sideboard, and I'll show off some sideboard cards again, cards with moon in their art, the moon in their art, a moon in their art, I should say, we're going to be utilizing any colors when it comes to that as well. Regardless, the list for all these will be in the description below. Make sure you check that out. But yeah, the goal with this commander, our goal with this commander is to get this out, flip it, get some amazing cards, get access to, and potentially, you know, have some of our friends as well get access to them as well, when we want them to have access to those cards as well. But yes, we are going to be doing that again, and again, and again, and getting a lot of amazing cards for the situation that we're in, all that have some amazing artwork that features, well, the moon. So with all that said, let's jump into the tactics and talk about how we're going to make all of this happen. So first up, there is Wayfarer's Bobble. Now, when it comes to our ramp tactic number one, no fix, we are going to be utilizing cards that either... Don't help us fix our mana, but helps us get our own commander out and flipped and transformed. And then we're also going to be utilizing in a future tactic, we'll talk about that, cards that can help us actually ramp and fix our mana. Because again, our commander is going to be giving us access to cards that are outside of just mono black. That being said, yeah, we still need to actually get there where we get our commander out and flip it too. So we have a lot of efficient and effective ramp spells like Wayfarer's Bob. We'll pay two tap, go get a basic land and a play tapped. Airflowing Chalice is a flexible mana rock. Pay two, taps for one, pay four, taps for two, etc. etc. Soul Ring, yeah, crazy card. Even right now, finally budget friendly, less than a dollar. Cost one, taps for two. Fractured Power Stone, it only taps for one, but for two, but again, that is extremely efficient compared to, well, basically anything but Soul Ring for the most part. Iron Crag does the exact same thing, can also turn to equipment if we need to, and our commander can be a win condition if we really want to take our opponents out with commander damage. Mind Stone, we can actually sacrifice this one for one mana and tapping it to draw a card to replace it. Thought Vessel, no maximum hand size, that's nice because, yeah, we're going to be utilizing cards from outside the game, so we might not be utilizing our cards in our hand, so just being able to hold on to them or draw extra cards and keep them can be great. Victory Chimes, again, when it comes to utilizing more and more cards, we're going to have a lot of cards we have access to, including Instance. This we can untap on each player's untap step and give us one mana basically each turn. Hedron Archive is a great one as well. 
Pay two, tap, sacrifice it, draw two cards. It taps for two. Slightly cheaper, though. I got Warden Power Stone, though. This does come into play. Uh, it comes into play tapped, but we can utilize it the next turn for a good amount of mana. Again, tapping for two. Sisse's Ring and Urgolm's Eye do the exact same thing. Each of them tap for two mana. Then there's Stone Speaker Crystal. This one also taps for two mana for four. Pay two, tap, sacrifice, exile any number of target players' graveyards and draw a card. So this can be some great graveyard removal for us as well. And then we also have he <laughs> Dreamstone Hedron, if I could talk not... Not Hemstone Deedron, which I was going to say, which uh, that, that's that's its other kind of card, other kind of effect, essentially. No, this one is six mana, taps for three, pay three, and tap and sacrifice it to draw three cards. So again, with some of these in a panic mode, if we already have a lot of other mana rocks, and again, we are using so, so many cards for ramp because we want to get our commander out. We want to flip it very quickly. At some point, you would be like, well, I just need some more cards. So let's draw some with this. Next up, though, let's move into tactic number two. The fix is in because, like I mentioned, yeah, we've got ramp that can just help us get our commander out, can help us cast black spells, can help us get other mana rocks out, can help flip our commander, but not help us cast our other spells potentially that we're getting from outside the game. So we've got some mana rocks like Astrocornucopia, which can help with that. Basically, an ever-flowing chalice, but for 3x, essentially. And yeah, it can tap for a lot of mana of any one color. Pyramid of the Pantheon, known as like a Build Lotus by some. Pay to tap for 1 mana, so it's kind of like basically filters our mana in that way, ineffectively. But then we get Brick Counters on it. Once you get the third one on it, it can tap for 3 mana of any one color. Felwar Stone. Our opponents can help us out now, too. How nice of them. We can tap this for 1 mana of any color that they could produce, essentially, with a land. So, yeah. This can usually tap for all five most of the time in Commander. Cold Seal of Heart. This one is about field tap. Can tap for one mana of any color that we choose. Essentially, once this comes down, we choose any of those colors, and whatever we need, we pick that. Obsidian Obelisk, enters Battlefield Tap, can only tap right colors, but we can also tap and spend one man of any color on any multicolored spell. So if we are getting those multicolored spells from outside the game, this can really help us out. Prismatic Lens, this one can tap for a colorless, or we can actually filter our mana with it if we need to. Coalition Relic can either tap for one mana now, or we can store up that mana in a way with a charge counter, and then next turn get an extra mana of any color and still tap it for a mana. Then there's Bounty Board, tap for one mana of any color. We can get bounty counters on our opponent's creatures, and when we do, hey, uh, our opponents and ourselves that are... Not that creature's owner are going to get to draw and gain to life. Commander's Sphere, another one. Taps for any color. We can sacrifice it to draw a card to replace it. Cultivator's Caravan. Taps for one of any color, but we can also crew three to make this into a 5-5 five, five when needed. Lantern of Revealing. Tap for one man of any color. We can also up ramp with this as well. Pay for tap like top Career library. If it's a land, it comes right on the battlefield tapped. If not, you can put it on the bottom of our library if we need to. Decanter of Endless Water, again like Thought Vessel. This one actually can help us fix our mana though. No maximum hand size, tap for one mana of any color. Mana Geode, another great card. Scry one on the ETB, taps for any color. Network Terminal, this one can actually give us some card selection as well. Tap for one mana of any color, and we can also pay one to tap and tap another to untapped artifact we control to actually loot. So again, some great card selection there. Skyclave Relic, early on, we can just pay three, and it's going to be an indestructible, basically Dark Steel England. And we can tap this for any money of any color, or we can kick it and then get two extra copies of it. Progenitor's Icon. Choose a creature type. Whatever our commander is. Alicord again. Choose that. Taps for one of any color. Tap the next spell the chosen type you cast this turn. My cast that would have flash. So again, you can flash your commander in if you need to. Or let's say you've got a you know creature theme out of your sideboard as well. You could pick that one instead. Empowered auto generator. My goodness, throughout the game, this can give you so much mana. Andrew's Battlefield tapped. Tap, put one charge counter on it and add one mana. And then the next time two. Then the next time three. And you see where this is going. Firebind Vessel. Speaking of two mana though. Andrew's Battlefield tapped. And we can tap it for two mana of different colors. So this can really help us with our multicolored spells. Next up though. Let's talk about the Golden Pig of this deck. The number one card out of our 99. And in my opinion, the Golden Pig of this deck is... I'm going to mess up this name. Terra Ceres. We're going to go with that. Devastation. My apologies. I probably mispronounced that, but my, it's okay. Sorcery for X2. Black, black. You lose X life and create X tap. Power stone tokens. Then all creatures get minus one, minus one until out of turn for each artifact you control. This can be absolutely massive because, well, power stone tokens, though not the best things in the world, are really good with this kind of a commander because our goal with this kind of a commander is to get access to sideboard cards again and again and again and to do that we need to keep paying six or we can have some of our friends at the table help pay but if they're not willing to pay we need a lot of resources to do so and by actually just making a ton of essentially mana rocks that are dedicated to do so we can do that with this while wiping out the board too which 
Also, we'll talk about here in a little bit. Yeah, it's okay to wipe out our commander. If we take our commander out, we either can replay from the command zone, again, face up again to set ourselves up to flip it again, or we've got ways to get it back right away, and we'll talk about those here in a little bit. That being said, I probably should have already let you know what Power Stone tokens are, just in case. The tokens are artifacts with tap, add colors. This mana can't be spent to cast a non-artifact spell. Again, we've got a ton of artifacts in this deck, too, so we can utilize that massive ramp from these to help cast those, but also, again, our commander's activate ability, we can utilize those for this. So, a great card in this deck. Removal, Wrath, and also huge ramp for us what's not to love about this card next up though tactic number four remove and recover yeah we're not done removing some things just yet and also keep in mind that with the sideboard yeah we've got access to an absurd amount of things we've got access to a lot of cards we've got access to removal card draw more ramp if you need it amazing creatures amazing threats win conditions so yeah, essentially, you can go get what you need from there when you need it, but it's nice to just have some removal in the deck, especially ones that can help us do other things too, like Blood Money. Source for a 7 mana to destroy creatures. For each non-token creature, destroy this way you create tapped treasure token. So essentially, wipe everything out, clean the slate, and get a ton of mana for us to, well, cast spells. Again, our treasure can help us fix our mana, cast spells from our sideboard, essentially, that we're getting, or also just replay our commander, flip our commander, whatever you need to do. Speaking of which, Necromantic Selection. Sorcery for seven mana, destroy all creatures, and then return a creature card, put into a graveyard this way to the battlefield under your control. It's a black zombie to choose other colors and types. Exile Necromantic Selection. So essentially with this one, well, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be saying, hey, let's wipe the board. Let's get rid of everything. And you know what? My commander was flipped to the backside, and I want it flipped back to the front side. So, hey, I wiped my commander out. I'm getting that right back in play again, front side up. So all of a sudden, I am ready to flip it again and get more cards from my sideboard. So a great removal spell for us. But now let's move on to tactic number five with 10 cards not dead yet because I did allude to this. Hey, you know what? Our commander, we're okay if it gets taken out, even if it's our own wrath or an opponent's removal spell, whatever it is. We're like, okay, cool. Yeah, take out my commander because I'm going to cast Feign Death or any of these other Feign Death type effects. Instant for a single black mana until end of turn. Target creature gains when this creature dies. Return to the battlefield. Tap arms on control with a plus one counter on it. Basically, all these cards pretty much do the exact same thing, except, yeah, slight, you know, variations on counters or whatnot. All that we care about is, hey, if our commander is going to die, it comes right back. So we've got ways to play with that and ensure that we can basically flip our commander, get our commander ready to go, and just kind of have great protection spells with these as well. Not that after all, essentially the exact same thing, except we get a wicked, wicked roll token attached to it. So there's that. Undying Evil gives our commander undying until end of turn. So if it didn't have a counter on it, cool, it comes back with a plus one counter on it when it dies. Then there's Supernatural Stamina. Gives that creature plus two plus zero on top of the Feign Death type effect. Undying Mouse, literally the exact same thing as Feign Death. Abnormal Endurance. Again, the exact same thing as Supernatural Stamina, but for two mana. Again, two mana is going to be well worth it as well. Fake your own death, the exact same thing as that, but also giving us a treasure token too. There's a lot of these, and they're great. <laughs> Demonic Gives, again, the exact same thing essentially as Abnormal Endurance. Fungal Fortitude, an enchantment aura, plus two plus zero. You can flash this in, and again, when the creature dies, you feign death. That creature comes right back. Return to action. Very similar, plus one with zero in a lifelink though instead. And then also, hey, again, Feign Death. So yes, ways to essentially say, hey, you know what, Commander, you are coming back. You're coming back face up so I can flip you again and get that amazing, amazing sideboard action. But now to on to tactic number six. Sacrifices must be made. There are nine cards in this tactic, and we are going to be... Well, utilizing our commander or other cards as a resource. We're going to be sacrificing things for card advantage. And again, sacrificing our commander connection be a good thing. Set yourself up for that feign death type effect. Or yeah, at a certain point, you might have a mana where you're just like, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, I really need cards out of my sideboard. I've got like 20 plus mana or whatever it is at this point. I'll sacrifice my commander, replay, and flip it all at once. Lovely. Vampiric Rites, Bay 1 in Black, Sacrifice a Creature, Game Will Life, Draw a Card, Repeatable, Fantastic Sacrifice Outlet. Convicted Corruption, 1 mana, Sacrifice 1 Creature, Draw 2 Cards. Build Rites, exact same thing. Viserys here, Repeatable, Free Sacrifice Outlet for us. Single Black Mana, 1-1, one, one, Sacrifice a Creature, Scry 1. Deadly Dispute, again, Making Treasures can be great, Doubles Fix our Mana, Sacrifice an Artifact or a Creature, 
draw two cards, make a treasure token. Then there's costly plunder, sacrifice the artifact or creature to draw two as well. Nasty and sacrifice a creature, draw two cards, but the sacrifice creature was legendary. Again, our commander is draw three cards instead, so that can be huge. Reckoner's Bargain, sacrifice an artifact or creature, gain life equal to its mana value, which is lovely, and also draw two cards as well. And then Woe Strider, kind of like a slightly more expensive Aceris here, but still a little more flexibility to it. It says when it enters the battlefield, you get a 0-1 white goat creature token. Sacrifice the creature scry one. So again, exact same as Viserys here there. We can also escape it to get it back out though. Exiling four of the cards from our graveyard for three black black. And it comes in to play with two extra counters on it, which can be nice. So again, kind of like an extra Viserys here for us that has a little more oomph to it as well. But of course, we want to keep things going as well. So let's move on to tactic number seven, dig down. Let's dig down into our deck, get more cards out of it, get to the cards that we need, get to more ramp, get to more removal, whatever we need for the situation we're in, get to ways to flip our commander essentially so that we can get more amazing cards out of our sideboard with Moon in their art. We've got sign in blood, target player draws two cards, loses two life for two mana, very effective, very efficient. Read the bones, nearly the exact same thing, but just for us, we scry two first though, which is fantastic setting yourself up. Ancient Craving, and then Ambitions cost you the exact same thing. Draw three cards, lose three life. One card for one life is well worth it in Commander. Again, you've got 40 life. It's a resource. Utilize it. Siphon Mine. Everyone else discards one card. We draw one for each of those cards discarded. So, typically... Four, you know, four mana, we are drawing three cards and forcing three discards, which is absolutely massive. Moonlight Bargain, look at the top five, five cards of your library for each card. Put that card in your graveyard, unless you pay two life, brush in your hand. So we can get up to five cards with this if we pay 10 life. Uh, it might not be worth that. Maybe it is, depending on the scenario. Or just pick and choose the one card that you need and lose some life as well. Promise of Power. Five mana, draw five, lose five. Absolutely. You can also make a demon if you really want to entwine this, but typically it's more so just like let's dig down into our deck a ton. And now I just want to show off the actual sideboard that you've got access to. What you can do on Scryfall is type in art and then a colon and say, hey, whatever you know, word essentially might be in an image in this case moon there you go moon when it comes to my budget again the card's going to be less than one dollar and i also took out lands because this commander doesn't allow you to play those cards it is cast so you cannot cast lands you must play lands so with this you've got access to again apparently according to sky for all right now 668 cards again for your potential sideboard so you've got a lot of amazing ones again like I mentioned earlier, you've got even more, you know, card draw if you want, you know, throw a possibility, opt, harmonize, factor, fiction, you get removal like dark Stone mutation, steel, hell kite. If you need more ramp, Palladian mirror, sure, there you go. And Prince of the Moon, again, some more amazing removal. You've got some big threats. You've got some amazing cards. Urza's Ruinous Blast, you've got some great removal with that as well. You've got some really spicy cards that, again, you really shouldn't have access to. But, again, you do get access to with this commander as long as everyone's okay with it. And, again, you can give your opponents access to those cards as well if they are your friend, if they helped you out, if you want to make a deal. So, yeah, utilize these amazing cards. Utilize this site as a resource to ensure that you can find some crazy things to do with it and absolutely have fun with this kind of a commander but now this episode is coming to a close again if you are interested in this commander in this deck in this sideboard <laughs> make sure you check out those cardless links in the description below this is one where please ask your playgroup ahead of time because again not everyone out there is okay with silver border commanders that being said, if they are, great. And also make sure you ask them about the sideboard edition as well. Being like, are you okay if the sideboard is part of it? Because obviously that's what this commander wants to do. And then also, are you okay with that sideboard being five colors? So make sure you ask those questions first. Maybe even just show them this video ahead of time to kind of show what this deck might want to do. And of course, make tweaks to the deck if you want. Make tweaks to that sideboard if you want. Utilize whatever cards you need. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.